I thank you all for the opportunity you have created me. I thank our host who has given <coughs> us a warm reception. And when we are placed in a warm atmosphere, we require something cold to drink. When we are placed in cold atmosphere, we require something warm to drink. Then we say it is happy. Is it the warmth or the cold that is happy to us? Neither of it is really happy. Sometimes according to the environment, warmth is happy and sometimes cold is happy. And the life principle we have oscillates between the two extremes. So, when life requires cold when it is hot and requires heat when it is cold, when is it that we have real happiness? At what temperature we feel really happy? So, what we call the happiness according to the external sensations is only relative and is only temporary. It depends upon the environment. If environment were to decide happiness, happiness will be always oscillating between happiness and unhappiness. And that is the sum and substance of the human life when take it as a sum total of sensations. But generally we live according to sensations. When we have work, we desire for rest. When we have too much of rest, we desire to do something or to speak to someone. When we spend many hours in company, we want to be alone. When we spend many hours lonely, we require company. Is there any real truth in it? There seems to be some truth in what we say happiness. But as long as we depend upon the external sensations, there seems to be only an idea of happiness and not happiness. So, to many of us, happiness is only an idea and not an experience. We live in hope of happiness. We work in hope of happiness. And many times, we live in the absence of happiness, but in the total presence of the idea of happiness. When happiness is, an is only an idea, it cannot be an experience. So, when we want to understand what real happiness is, we have to understand ourselves away from the external sensations. Is it to endure these sensations? When the sensations are positively real to us, we cannot endure them. We are asked to sit there, we can't endure it. When we are asked to sit throughout the night out, outside, in winter, we can't endure it. Not only that, the body cannot live through it. So there are two aspects in it. One is our enduring and the other is the body enduring. The endurance of the body is real and the endurance of the mind has something imaginary about it. If we distinguish between the two, we find that there should be a degree of resistance and we should be able to endure through some skillful method. When we are thinking of the heat and cold, there is no question of enduring them. Only when our mind is switched off to another thing which is more interesting, then there is something which we call enduring. Our five senses are working in the external world and the mind is responding to the environment and whenever the mind stands in contact with the environment, then the mind behaves according to the environment and the result is the absence of happiness. When the mind is undergoing change continuously, how can there be happiness to us? So there should be a method to understand and practice by which the environment stops to exist to us and we begin to live and then it becomes real life. That is possible when we practice the science of 
species. The cell cells start to exist to the environment and the environment starts to exist to the senses when the mind and senses are engaged somewhere. For example, when you are absorbed in something which is very important with your friend who is in some other place, then in your absorption of the thought with the friend, your environment stops to exist to you just as the bricks in the wall now before your eyes stop to exist to you until I suggested to you, though your eyes are open and the bricks are in front of you. You are not looking at the bricks until I suggested the idea of bricks to you and it is because we are engaged in some other thought. That means the bricks stop to exist to you as long as you lived in your own world. Now, you should be able to choose your own world where you can live when the environment stops to exist to you. This is one aspect. The other thing is, if everyone chooses his own thought to get absorbed, there will be no relationship between two persons and everyone should live in his own world. That means there is nothing common between any two. This makes life impossible. So what we choose should be having something in common with others. And when we choose that which is common with others, we have to choose that which is really useful to others and ourselves. Otherwise, it cannot be common between two people. If we choose only according to our liking and environment, then it cannot be common with others. I may like something and you may like something. I may like to get myself absorbed in poetry and you may like to get absorbed in painting. Both can be called artists, but we both have nothing in common. When both the artists are put together, they have nothing to do in this world. The, the artist, the painter speaks of his own art, gets absorbed in his own painting and the poet gets absorbed in his own poetry and tries to produce his own poetry. But then there is no possibility for a third man to enjoy the poetry or the art because he has his own interests to get absorbed which are not at all in common with either the poet or the painter. Like that there is a world which can be <coughs> created by everyone for himself but there is also a world which is common to many. We should have at least a world which is common to two people. That can get as two people absorbed in one interest. And then the environment stops to exist to both. If three of us have an interest, it keeps us absorbed in our own world. If hundred of us have a common interest, it can keep the hundred away from the environmental effects. What is it that can form a common ground for hundred people to get absorbed? We should find common interests. What are the interests that are common to all the human beings? Food, drink and shelter form the common interests. And when we begin to eat food, when we begin to drink water, when we begin to build our own house, once it is finished, the interest is not there. So it is only disconnected and not continuous. So it is ordained for the people on this earth that there is something in common with all. That is myself working for you and yourself working for me. Then you find common interest between us both and the work goes on continuously so that it may not be disconnected and the interest becomes common more and more. In this world, nature has ordained us to have some work to do and it has linked up 
our livelihood with the work we do. Anyone on this earth cannot live without doing something which is useful to others. If anyone wants to live like that, life becomes a misery to him. If the businessman is doing his business, he may think that it is doing for his own uh, capital, for his, for his own profit and benefit. But what he does should be useful to others. Otherwise, he cannot do business. He may get benefit from what he does, but what he does should be of some use to others. I cannot cut my hair and sell it to others in the name of business. Nobody will purchase it and there is no business. We should sell something which is of some use to some people. So the work of business can be for our profit, but before that it should be for the use of others. I may call it my business, but in fact it is the business of others that I am doing because I have to see that my business should be of some use. If I am producing tumblers and think that it is my business, it's not true. It is the work of others that I am doing so that others use the tumblers and it is for their use that I am working, whether I, am, whether I accept it or not. If one starts a big shop for his own benefit, he should sell things that are useful to others. No one can sell dust in his shop and make a benefit. If he calls it his shop and his business, he may call it, but it is not true. It is the for the use of others he is selling things. So it is the work of others that he is doing. Business is his and work is for others. The same is the case with the profession of anyone. If you are working as a manager in a, an office or a clerk in an office or if you are working as a carpenter or a mason, then the work is yours, <laughs> but the work is done for others. The profession is yours, but the profession is intended for others, not for you. So every one of us, almost, on this earth, is linked up with some work which is really of use to others. The more we think of the use to others, the more we'll, we will be benefited. At least for the selfish use of our more benefit, we should be more polite and more useful to others. If the businessman has a competition in the market, it is only the good businessman that can stand the competition for a continued length of time and can sustain himself. If a businessman plays some deceit and cheating, he may believe that he will be benefited immediately, but the result is he will be kicked off soon. So living beings are kept on this earth and linked up with work and sincerity. At first, people may begin to work for the selfish benefit, but gradually when we take more and more reincarnations, we will come to understand that work is for others and the benefit is to sustain us. And when this body requires food and drink and rest, and when the public require the same thing, there are two angles through which we can see the fact. One is to maintain ourselves. We can do our business. To feed ourselves and to supply things to ourselves and to have a good house for ourselves, to have a bank balance for ourselves, to have a property for ourselves. Mm. We have to go on working. We work for ourselves. And when we believe that we work for ourselves, the interest will be in us 
and the quality of work goes down. And when the quality of the work goes down, we will be gradually kicked by the society as sheets, and then again we begin we begin to work for the society. And once again we take up the aspect of business mind, and we will try to be good to others for a selfish motive. But when our interest is with our motive, we again gradually lose interest in our goodness to others, and we begin to care more for our income than for the quality we produce to others. Then once again we become unpopular, and once again we will be kicked out. Let it be an individual or a family, or a nation or a race, or a country. The fate is like that. When one works for others, when others find more and more useful, the existence of the one will be more and more safe. And when one cares less and less for others, and cares only for his return or his profit in a business, or only for the salary of his job on the first of every month, then the quality of his work goes down. and he will be kicked out this is inevitable in this world though we can play a little deceit here and there the total is that unless we do something you really useful to others we are not allowed to live on this earth the whole setup is <coughs> fixed as our psychological setup in the form of our own nature human nature it is set up by the nature that created us the same nature has created the human nature in which we are living and it has arranged the same aspect in the human nature so that we may behave only according to human nature and begin to work for others not allowing others to take a benefit when the work is not useful so there is something in hum- human nature which gives us working it may be compulsory or it may be optional we may do it unhappily or we may do it happily but we have to do it and it becomes compulsory an amount of, dis- of discipline is automatically there in nature of which we can take advantage if we do not understand this type of discipline that is already there in nature stops to be discipline and becomes compulsory and punishment when discipline is properly understood it becomes a pleasure when it is not properly understood it becomes punishment we may punish ourselves thinking that our work is compulsory <coughs> and we feel most we may feel most unhappy to work for others we may complain to our friends that we are unhappy to work for others and say that we lose all our independence in the hands of others because we are working for others <coughs> even then it becomes compulsory but when once we begin to understand the innate discipline in nature that is placed in human nature in such a skillful way that no individual can escape because the human intelligence has a tendency to escape also unless it undergoes a discipline for a long time the individual intelligence tries to escape from duty is always and whenever it tries to escape it will kick, it will be kicked off from the society and the result is confusion and war and whenever there is war we have a lesson a better lesson to learn and again society will be reorganized with the same values which were older so that we begin to work for others once again what happens if everyone has to cook for himself in the house no one can do anything he has to cook and eat for himself from morning to evening he has to wash his own clothes and iron them for himself and he has to polish his own boots not only that he has to prepare his own boots he has to knit his own stockings and for that nobody is going to give him the material to prepare 
If I come to you and say, Sir, I have to cook my food from morning to evening, therefore you be giving me the floor to prepare bread and some fuel to have fire and some containers and vessels to prepare my own, you are not going to accept it. Even though you want to favor me, it's not possible for you. Therefore, there is a beautiful arrangement in this world that you should do my work and I should do your work. Unless I do your work and you do my work, we do not live in this world, we are going to die and perish. See how nature arranged our uh, parts of the body on us. When our right hand is itching, your, right, your left hand has to scratch it. The right hand cannot scratch, scratch itself. When you have to <coughs> wash your left hand, it is only your right hand that can wash it. No hand can wash itself. And if <coughs> your eye has a swelling under it, only it is the eye of others that can see. Your eye cannot see your eye. Your tongue can know the taste of other things. The tongue cannot taste itself. The nose can smell the smell of other things and it cannot find its own smell. Any part of our body is arranged in such a way that it can do the work of the other parts of the body and no part can do its own work. The head cannot walk for itself. The legs carry the body and the body nourishes the legs. The mouth works for the whole body. The mouth cannot feed itself and keep quiet. What the mouth eats goes into the stomach, not into the mouth. This is the arrangement that is done in the society. Whatever arrangement you find in your own body, the parts of your body, you will find the same arrangement in the society and the same law governing the society. Only when you think of others in terms of usefulness, in terms of some work, then you can survive. The next step is, it is your duty to understand that the work you do for others is sacred. You should understand that it is the only means of discipline. If you stand in your own room and make asanas all day long and keep your body fit and healthy, call it discipline, it is false. It is only hygiene and not discipline. Discipline is when we are in the presence of others. When we are to practice discipline, we can practice it only when we are doing, when we begin to do something for others. Sometimes parents very much enforce to try to enforce discipline upon their children. In some countries, the parents are very much mad after discipline of the young people. They say, be disciplined. And they do not allow their children to do anything. They want them to be disciplined. They will be utterly disappointed. Because in the end, they find their sons <laughs> cheats and gangsters. It is only by creating some work, you can give discipline to anyone. Similarly, by doing something to others, we can discipline ourselves. Only by talking to others, we can discipline our speech. Only by thinking about others, we discipline our thoughts. There is the necessity of a threefold discipline in the human life. The discipline of the body, which can be found only by manual work. The, discipl the discipline of speech, which can be had only by our conversations with others. And the discipline of our thoughts, which can be done only by thinking good about others. Without practicing this threefold, this threefold discipline, how is it possible for us to live on this earth? So when we properly think, it is the work that gives us discipline, and the school which treat, teaches us how to work is the, fa the family. The unit of the father, mother and child should be the first school of the child. The father gets his discipline as father. 
mother gets discipline as mother and child gets discipline as child only in an ideal house but there are many practical difficulties to receive this di- discipline in the modern accidental setup i don't say it is the defect of the accidental setup but i say it is the defect of the present setup of the accident in the ancient days it was not like that in the accident there was the unit of the family in the accident also working as a school as the first school to the members of the family as much as it is done in the traditional families of india even today but when the child is sent to a nursery school and when children are sent to residential schools and when old people are sent to the prisons of old houses and when young couples do not know what to do in the house it is about 100 years that the accident has gone into such such an undesirable state and the result is the old people die a helpless death having no companion they die for 10 years or 15 years in their rooms in the old houses they die for 10 years or 15 years <laughs> continuously because they are alone in their rooms not knowing what to do the children grow up as orphans without knowing what psychologically a father and a mother is and the parents are still living as a couple not parents and they do not realize how they are husband and wife they can realize only that they are man and woman but they cannot realize that they are husband and wife and also that they are father and mother but all this was present in the accident also before the advent of the industrial revolution just have a look back into the real values of the society do not be ashamed to accept that we have degenerated in our real values be ready to rectify and demand what you really want it should not be a political fight for rights but it should be a spiritual confirmation of what you want to live once again as a human being realizing that work is worship and that work is the only thing that purifies you mm-hmm. and that disciplines you and keeps you in the interest of a human being mm-hmm. without the interest of a human being the human machine works only as a lifeless and cold machine unless the father and mother feel the fatherhood and motherhood to the child they do not understand wha- what for they live mm-hmm. it may be one child not more than that you can be very careful about your pa- family planning but there's nothing wrong in it but you should be a parent mm-hmm. of your child mm-hmm. and see that the child begins to work with you the child should see that it begins to work with the parents otherwise when the parent is sent to the residential schools it does not understand what relationship it has with others it becomes only a computer of education a machine which reads and reproduces which learns and remembers which works in the world there will be no difference between a motor car and a living being and see how work can be your discipline how work can make you live work for your people makes you understand the need of work for others affection to your own people makes you understand the affection for other people step by step it leads you to have an affection in the spiritual sense unless you are ready to serve your child when it is sick if you join your child in the hospital and yourself go to the cinema or a week end you cannot know what the child is oh. you cannot understand what affection is yeah. unless you experience and understand what affection is you can be a machine of intelligence yes. but you cannot be a human being the mm-hmm. uh, ideal of human existence is experience not intelligence it is affection